When it comes to research, organization is key. And Clara Capture is a fantastic tool for helping you capture and organize your research. Over these three short videos, I'm gonna show you how to get the best out of its features. And in this video, I'm gonna focus on the first capture option, capture selected text. When you start a new project, you need to think about giving it a name. And this should be the focus for what you want to achieve. So for example, you could title it the name of a single source, such as a book or a journal. And we go through that text, grabbing some choice quotes or sections that best establish some key themes from that author. Another example might be that you title your project the name of your essay or a particular topic, and this becomes a mixed source Clara Capture project. So here you'd be adding text from different journals, scanned books, or online articles. You could even create an ongoing research project that you keep on adding to over time. So there are two ways to open up Clara Capture. The first is from within Clara Read, found under Extras. Alternatively, you can open Clara Capture via its own independent icon that can be pinned to the taskbar. So here we have a blank project in which we can capture and organize our research. Under the drop down menu next to the capture button, you'll find three capture options. In this particular video, we'll look in detail at the first capture option, capture selected text. We'll then have a look at capture highlighted text in Word and then capture screen section. A Clara Capture project can consist of a mixture of all three, but we'll be looking at each in turn to make sure you get the most out of each capture option. Let's create a mixed source Clara Capture project. The first place I want to grab some text from is a scanned book, which I scanned and converted to Word using Clara Reads scan feature. In order to quickly get to the info I need, I'm going to use the find feature and search for a keyword. You can either click the find button or you can use the shortcut control F. As you can see, this brings up the navigation window on the left. I'm going to search for the keyword Picasso. We've now got every instance of that word listed. So let's find a good section to capture from. This looks good. We're then going to simply select the text we want to capture and then click capture selected text. I'm just going to expand Clara Capture by clicking the show button. And as you can see, we've captured our first item. Notice how it's grabbed the title of the document, the date, our text and the source. So this is where the document can be found on my machine. To make referencing easier later on down the line, it's worth entering the page number alongside the title. So this is from page 54. Let's capture a little more from this book. Let's grab this paragraph over on the right. To speed things up, you can actually just hit the capture button as the default is set to capture selected text. Again, I'm going to add the page number. So this is from page 59. Okay, capture selected text works anywhere you can physically select some text. That might be from a PDF a web page, a PowerPoint, or even something like an audio note taker project. Next, I want to capture from a journal. I chose to convert this PDF to Word using Clara Reads scan feature. This was really to take advantage of full text-to-speech functionality and Word's more advanced search features. So let's now search for the word composition, then find a good section, select it, and press capture. Again, I'm going to add the page number as it makes life so much easier when it comes to referencing. Now for some online research. The find feature is also available here. So again, control F allows you to pinpoint keywords within the text. Let's select some text and press capture. As you can see, it's now grabbed the title of the article, the date we accessed it, which is essential for referencing, and it's also grabbed the URL. 
I'm just going to briefly touch on another capture option as I want to grab a small section of this painting. Choosing Capture Screen Section brings up a crosshair. Use this to draw a rectangle around the part of the screen you want to screenshot. To keep organised, let's add a tag to this. So a bit of terminology. Each one of these is called an item, and these items make up a Clara Capture project. We can insert a blank item by clicking File, then New Item. This might be useful for capturing your own thoughts on a particular piece of research. In this example, I'm going to analyse this section of the painting. I'll title this Image Analysis and add some of my own thoughts. We can also drag and drop any file to an item. So I'm going to create a new one. And it might be that I've done enough research for one day and I want to add some documents that I'm yet to look at. I'm going to add the title, things to look at tomorrow. And then I'm going to add a PowerPoint and a PDF simply by dragging and dropping the files onto the item. I can now also access them from here. Let's now maximise Clara Capture in order to explore some of the options available to us. Clicking on the blue arrow brings up a range of options or you can simply right click anywhere in an item to make them appear. There's the usual copy, paste and delete. Then we've got indent. It's actually possible to export a Clara Capture project to Clara Ideas to create a mind map. Indents play an important part in the process. However, I'm going to devote a future video to this. For organization, you might find indents useful for tagging those items you've chosen to use in your essay or those that you've added to your bibliography. Or maybe just to highlight those items that need exploring in more detail. It's completely up to you. Any that you've indented can be outdented at any time. You can also move items in order to reorder them. This might be in the order you plan to use them or just to group certain items together. Audio note can be fantastic for reminders or tags. Often you find a great piece of research but then later forget its intended purpose or how it relates to other research. So here we click audio note, and when you're ready, hit record. This supports my conclusion that Guernica remains a potent symbol of anti-war protest. Notice how the blue arrow goes red, which means you've recorded something. We can then simply re-click audio note to listen back to it. This supports my conclusion that Guernica remains a potent symbol of anti-war protest. View source is hugely important as it allows us to go back to the original document to view the information in context. You'll find this feature works in text grabbed from Microsoft Word but not from PDFs. That might be another good reason to convert them using Clara Read. We can also jump back to the original web page. It's fantastic for keeping you on track with referencing and stops you from having a million tabs open. It might be you're doing some research on one particular book or journal and that might be the title of the project. Or it might be something more general like a particular topic or the name of your essay. I'm going to call this project Research on Picasso's Guernica. Before I send this project to Word, I'm going to tick one feature found under Settings, Create Bibliography in Word. Now, this bibliography won't be accurate enough for your academic work. However, it offers you a great start for referencing and can be a super handy tool used in conjunction with something like Cite This For Me or RefWorks. So let's now send this project to Microsoft Word. And in a moment, 
as if by magic, all our research is together on this one document. And we've also got all the associated data alongside it. Over on the left, we can use the headings tab to quickly jump to a particular item. And down at the bottom of the document, we've got the bibliography. Let's now go back to Clara Capture and this time send our project to PowerPoint. Here, each item becomes a slide. Brilliant for creating a super quick presentation. I know a lot of students like to use this to create revision flashcards. It's a great way to test yourself before an exam. That's all for now, and I hope you found that useful. In the next video, we'll focus on the second capture option, capture highlighted text in Word.